Hello, John Perry here. A couple of years ago, I was in Washington, D.C. I was speaking at the Science and Engineering Festival, and afterwards, I decided to go do some touristy stuff. I went to the, you know, Washington Monument and a couple of different places, one of which was the Supreme Court. And there, I met this cute little pug. Very overweight. <laughs> I was just fascinated by the little guy. It's so interesting to me that something like this evolved from a wolf. It's so bizarre. Behind me, I have a wolf skull. You've probably seen this in my other videos. Maybe you've wondered what it is. This is a wolf skull. And as you can see, the, the snout's very long. And the teeth come down together pretty much perfectly. There's not an underbite. There's not an overbite. They just clamp down just, just right. And a pug, of course, things are very different. Now, I don't have a pug skull. I do have this guy here. This is a French bulldog. And they actually have the same mutation, the same variation in their skulls, the flat-faced mutation. And as you can see, they also have a very dramatic underbite. The teeth come up uh, in front of the top of the jaw when it bites down. And I was curious. I wanted to know, why is this? What's happening at the level of the embryo, as the embryo is developing inside the womb, what's happening to make the pug's nose so short? Silly as the question might sound, why do pugs have flat faces? There's a lot of really interesting things we can learn about biology in general by studying this question. And, added bonus, we're going to use cake frosting to answer this question. 113 questions about evolution? with John Perry. Evolutionary question number 13. Why do pugs have flat faces? So here is my dog skull collection. These are all dogs. Well, technically the guy in the middle here is a wolf. But here we have a Great Dane who is bigger than the wolf. We've got the wolf. We've got a white terrier and we have a French bulldog. The French bulldog is the most similar to a pug. That pug that first started this question for me out on the steps of the Supreme Court of our nation. The really fascinating thing about these specimens is that in the wolf, you can see that the top of the snout is roughly the same length as the bottom of the snout. And again, those front teeth, they come and they clamp down just perfectly. It's really nice. In the Great Dane, we have a similar thing going on. Uh, the, the, the whole face is a little bit stubbier, but essentially it's the same structure as the wolf. Everything's bigger but the structure is the same as in the wolf. In the terrier, we have some really interesting things that are happening. So notice, first of all, that the there is no dip in the forehead. In the wolf, we have this dip right here in the forehead. In the uh, Great Dane, we have that dip as well. We don't have that in the, the bull terrier. Uh, and also, let me just get rid of the bottom jaws here. Just hold the, the top skulls. In the wolf, if I hold the the brain case parallel to the floor. If I hold it straight out, the nose and the face just stick straight out to the side there, if you can see that. If I do the same thing with the Bull Terrier, again, holding the brain case parallel to the floor, its face slopes downward quite dramatically. And if I show you these from the bottom, you can see that the, the Bull Terrier, it forms kind of this scoop type shape its skull, whereas the uh, the wolf has a very flat, the roof of its mouth is very flat. The roof of the mouth of the uh, bull terrier is very, very scoop-like. So that's interesting. What's going on there? And then here in the French bulldog, and again, this is a mutation that's very similar phenotypically to what's going on in a pug. Actually, it's literally the same mutation. The nose is very short on top and the mouth curls upwards. Why? Why is it doing that? It's so strange. It turns out that there is a set of genes in dogs, and we'll talk more about this in a future video, the exact genes and, and how they work, but there is a set of genes in dogs that controls the growth of the top of the snout, and there is a different set of genes that control the bottom of the snout. And in the wolf, the top and the bottom grow at the same speed. In the bull terrier, the top grows faster than the bottom, causing it to curve downward. And in the French Bulldog and in Pugs, the bottom grows faster than the top, and that causes everything to arch upward. 
at this weird angle. And just to show you how this works, <laughs> I've I whipped together some buttercream frosting. Warning, do not try this at home. You might get diabetes. Here, I'm going to simulate how it is that a wolf's face grows. So the blue here represents the top part of the snout and the white represents the bottom part of the snout as they're growing, as they're developing in the womb. And as you can see here, if I have them both growing at the same speed, more or less the same speed, bam, we get a nice straight shape that forms very similar to the straight snout of a wolf. <laughs> so this phallic shaped frosting sculpture is supposed to represent a wolf snout. And I suppose it does a pretty good job at that. If we look at the white bull terrier, its face slants downward quite dramatically. All we have to do to get this to happen is we use more blue frosting than white frosting. We get that nice arch, the, the blue as it's growing faster than the white. It just pushes the white down and so you get this beautiful curvature that happens. There we have the, the bull terrier's face. It, its face looks kind of like it's been melted downward. And then finally, if we want to get a flat-faced dog, if we want to simulate a flat-faced dog in frosting, all we've got to do is use a lot of white frosting and almost no blue frosting at all. And we get this upward-facing arch. What I showed you there with the frosting is a really good example of how embryos develop, uh, especially structures and embryos that grow from a single point outward. So the snout, which grows from the face, from the, from the rest of the skull, works pretty much like what we saw there with the frosting. Other structures that are very similar to this would be like the beak of a parrot. It grows a lot faster on the top than it does on the sides, and that causes it to arch downward as it grows. The talons of a bird, again, they're growing faster on the top than on the bottom, which causes them to curve as they grow. People that have straight hair, their hair follicles are pretty much perfectly round. And so the hair, as it comes out, it comes out at the same speed all around. If you have curly hair, the hair follicle is oval shaped, which causes it to come out faster in some areas and slower in others. And that gives you these nice curls that come out. All of us started out as single fertilized egg cells and that egg cell was round and it began to divide and grow it was pulling in nutrients and materials from its host its mother <laughs> and it was using those to build itself into larger and larger structures and the way that it transformed from a single sphere into this bizarre shaped thing that is you is that certain cells grew faster than other cells this differential cell growth speed is one of the major tricks that embryos use to build the complex three-dimensional shapes that we see in you know adult mature organisms obviously there's a lot more to embryology than different cell growth speed but it's really fun when a simple principle can teach you so much about your own biology in the next video we're going to talk about the genetics behind the flat noses found in pugs so Make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the little bell icon if you really want to make sure that you, you catch that next video. So long for now. As a farewell gift, I give to you a video of my dogs eating frosting. Next question.